In this video, I'm going to talk about heart failure. Now, heart failure is a general term that refers to the decrease in function of the heart. Now, there's a lot that goes into the heart being able to function normally. And if there's a decrease in function in any one of those components, it can cause a domino effect that can ultimately reduce the overall function. It can be complex, and there's a lot of rare causes, but I'll leave the rare ones out of this and keep this discussion to the most common causes. I'm gonna break it down into three different categories so that if you have to have a discussion with your doctor about heart failure, you'll know what they're talking about and be a little more informed to ask some better questions to understand. So let's get started. The three categories that I'm gonna use are one, pump versus relaxation, number two, right-sided versus left-sided, and number three, acute or sudden versus chronic, slow. Let's get into that first category. I described it as pump failure versus inability to relax. The actual term for it is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction versus heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Now, both of those involve two different functions. Let's talk about the central differentiator though, ejection fraction. What is an ejection fraction? It is a percentage of the amount of blood that is ejected from the left ventricle at rest. The optimum measurement, the optimum amount is 55 to 70%. The heart doesn't eject all of its blood with each pump at rest. It leaves some in reserve. Why does it do that? The reduced window or that reduced percentage is so that the heart has the ability to increase its ability to pump more should it have the metabolic demand, either from exercise or from illness or other metabolic needs. At rest, your optimal ejection fraction should be 55 to 70%, which is the most efficient. In heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, that ejection fraction is lower, indicating that the heart is not pumping its maximum ability and can't increase enough to meet metabolic demand. What are the most often causes of reduced ejection fraction? Well, it's gonna be a heart attack. Hypertension can do that. Metabolic diseases like diabetes. The difference between a heart attack and say hypertension is that a heart attack will cause muscle death in a specific area and that muscle death will cause a reduction in the ability of that area to pump and hence reduce the overall ability of the heart muscle. In conditions like hypertension or diabetes or other metabolic issues, the whole entirety of the heart is affected. And there can be scar tissue that's deposited, there can be reduced cellular function, and the heart muscle may be stiffer. It causes a global or overall reduction in the heart's squeezing ability. Either way, the ejection fraction is reduced. And that can go as low as 35%, even lower, depending on the severity of the condition. How that shows up is shortness of breath, retention of fluid, fatigue. Now, the other side of the coin, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, the ejection fraction is actually normal. It is 55 to 70% and may be able to increase during exercise or metabolic demand. But the problem is that the heart can't relax and stretch effectively. It is super stiff and oftentimes super thick. It's got a lot of scar tissue. Maybe there's a cellular problem, there's a metabolic problem, and it can't stretch. Stretching is an energy requiring process, just like squeezing. So if the heart is not functioning well on a cellular level, it can't stretch effectively and is stiff. That means the volume of blood in the left ventricle is gonna be reduced and it has a reduced ability to pump with each squeeze. It's got similar symptoms as the reduced ejection fraction in that it will show up with shortness of breath, fatigue, swelling, but it's often more of a global metabolic problem, maybe a problem with microscopic vasculature. Interestingly enough, the symptoms are similar with fluid retention because both cause a backup in the ability of the heart to fill with blood and that causes a backup into the venous circulation, and those veins become engorged, blood pools, and collect into the lower part of our extremities. 
So that's heart failure with reduced ejection fraction versus heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Let's go into the second category. That's gonna be right-sided versus left-sided heart failure. Now the heart has four chambers, two on the right side, two on the left. Right-sided chambers will pump blood to the lungs and only the lungs. Left-sided chambers pump to the rest of the body, to the entire circulation. The left side of the heart is far more muscular because to pump to the rest of the body requires much more force and covers much more arterial lengths. Most often we have left-sided heart failure, which will show up in symptoms of shortness of breath, fatigue, inability to lay flat, and fluid retention. That's gonna be a failure of that left side of the heart to pump to the rest of the body. If you have a failure of the right side of the heart, we have a decrease in the ability of the blood to pump through the lungs, but the main problem is more that it causes a backup in the blood flow to the legs and to the extremities and to the rest of the body. That's often a characteristic of right-sided heart failure. They may have swelling and some shortness of breath, whereas left-sided heart failure, both of those components and may have more fatigue and more other symptoms associated with the rest of the body. The third category is acute versus chronic, meaning sudden versus over a long period of time. Acute heart failure is often because of a heart attack, a ruptured valve, or some other sudden event that causes a sudden drop in the ability of the heart to produce forward blood flow. Chronic heart failure is occurring when there is a reduced ability of the heart to pump and there's a slow progressive reduction of ability to pump and accumulation of fluid throughout the body. One happens quickly over hours and the other can happen over days to months. Even though there's three categories, those are not mutually exclusive. A person can have any number of those types of heart failure. And in fact, when describing heart failure, you should be able to describe at least one aspect of each of those categories in a type of heart failure. You can have right-sided heart failure that is systolic and chronic. You can have a left-sided heart failure with reduced ejection fraction that is acute. It's helpful to describe each aspect of one of those categories to be more specific and have a better dialogue with your physician. I hope that explains heart failure a little bit more effectively and allows you to have a better understanding of some of the basic processes. If you like this video, hit like, and if you wanna hear more from me, hit subscribe. See you next time.